Working in the higher education sector, we routinely hear reference to various pedagogies and their underpinning philosophy of why we do what we do. And although we routinely hear of pedagogy as opposed to any of the others, how many of you remember andragogy or even heutagogy? Have you ever thought of checking out the etymology of these words to see their history and the developments? Now we need to ask ourselves how all of these various educational terms apply to e-learning, especially for adult learners and those on professional health and social care programmes. Because it's fair to say that so many of our learners in post-registration or post-graduate um, health and social care studies have been around the block quite a few times. Um, so by the time they come to us, they're already bringing lots of learning with them. Because so many of our post-qualifying health and social care professionals come to us with a vast amount of work-based and experiential learning, we need to explore how to build on that learning, not to reinvent the wheel. It's not as though we're trying to teach granny or granddad to suck eggs, but we're building on their learning experiences from clinical and professional practice. So maybe now is a good time to go and check those words out again, see how you can reapply them in these days of moving to more blended and online learning formats, and especially with so many different ways that we can provide learning to our learners. Therefore, it's important for us to customise the learning ologies, um, especially for e-teaching, e-learning and e-assessing. It may be that you feel yourself to be more of a pedagogue. You might be the one with all the expert knowledge and especially with pre-registration students, you're the ones imparting this knowledge to these individuals, many of whom may not have studied anything like this before. Of course, as you probably all remember, pedagogy is an ancient classical Greek term and it um, originated from slaves in rich families taking the boy child out uh, for, for that child to get a learning for life, an education. And pedagogy's key impact is often seen in the lecture hall or the classroom where the teacher is the one with the knowing and the students are there to learn from their individual teachers. But of course that's all changed and shifted now, especially as we're going online and that we need to encourage more participation from our learners to avoid them being passive recipients of knowledge imparted by others. So not only are we called upon as teachers to have the expert knowledge for our particular subject matter, but also looking at ways in which as educationalists, we can enable others to learn better from their experiences with us. And that's where the shift in andragogy comes in, exploring ways in which we can look at what the learners already know and maybe provide them with a tool, um, a toolkit or framework in which they can share that learning and enhance it and develop it further. Because even if you do a Google search on images looking at what is the difference between pedagogy and andragogy, something as simple as that, you'll find so many different tools um, and presentations which show you the key difference. And sometimes there are um, particular skills or attributes in adult learning that we could really do with maximizing more, and especially now as we're going on to blended and virtual learning. With andragogy, it's a clear sign of students participating in their own learning processes. But again, think of the particular students you have, especially in post-qualifying courses, where lots of them might have been taught in old systems and they do expect the teacher to spoon feed them or that they're meant to know. So it means that we have to re-educate our learners, not just on topic matters, but on learning um, how to learn best for themselves too. Eutagogy, of course, works well with those uh, advanced learners, those who are empowered or can be empowered to be self-determined as learners, those who just need a structure or framework and maybe go off and explore problem-based uh, learning to be able to find out ways of knowing more and hopefully be able to inspire others as they're doing it. With Eutagogy, there's a complete and utter shift 
From the former pedagogy, which is teacher-focused and teacher-centred, now putting learners right in the centre of their own learning process. So it's difficult to find a word that will encapsulate all three of these, so maybe pedandragogy is one that we could think of, which is certainly looking at two of the key um, concepts we've explored in this short video. It's information giving, um, knowledge, subject matter, expertise, but also facilitating those um, who are adult learners to be able to find the best ways of them maximising their own learning potential.